Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm going to help you set up the best PS2 emulator you've ever seen. This 2024 guide will help you play the classics, but looking and playing better than ever before. I hope it's helpful and efficient. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. All right, we're going to go to PCSX2.net. And from there, we're going to download the emulator. You'll see an option for latest stable or latest nightly. We're going to choose latest nightly and I'll tell you why. There's been a lot of changes to the program since the last stable release. So performance and compatibility is much higher on the latest nightly builds. Plus it has a better interface. The only time you should use the stable build is if you're running Windows 8.1 or below. So go ahead and grab the Windows version. Once it's downloaded, you need to extract the files from it. If you're on Windows 10 or below, you're going to need a program to unzip the files. You may be using WinZip or WinRare, but it really doesn't matter as long as you can get the files extracted. But it's very similar whether we're on 10 or 11, so we'll go through what to do next. Right click on the file and extract it to wherever you want, whether it's your downloads or desktop. Once you've extracted it, you can delete the zip file that you downloaded. Next thing we need is our BIOS. Now, I can't show you where to get the BIOS, but I'm sure if you Google it, you're going to find something. Here's a riddle. If you can't find a PS2 BIOS, don't frown. Go into Google. It's your second link down. We'll go ahead and extract that file just as we did for the emulator. Make sure to know the location of these unzipped files because we're going to access them later. Our next step is to go into the PCSX folder and launch the emulator. In that folder, you're going to launch the application. It's called PCSX2-QT. And we're in the emulator. The first screen will allow us to choose a theme, language, and enable automatic updates, which I would recommend you keep checked on. You want to get those. We'll go ahead and click Next. Now we have to select the BIOS. We'll simply hit Browse and go to the location of the BIOS that you unzipped earlier. You'll select that folder and you'll have a number of different BIOSes to select. Pick the region you want and click Next. From here, we need to add our ROMs. You go ahead and click Add and find the location of any ROMs you might have. For example, I have this one. We're going to click Yes on the Scan Recursively pop-up and then click Next. Now we set up the controller, which is super easy. I'm using an Xbox One controller, but you can really use any major controller. You simply plug it in, hit automatic mapping, find your controller in the drop down menu, and then go about your business. By go about your business, I mean select it and then click next. You can see our game here. Now we're going to go through a couple quick settings to make sure everything works the way you want it to. There's a lot we can go over here, but we're just going to focus on the things that make your game real good. Let's go to settings and graphics and we'll be on the display tab. You can have the aspect ratio as intended when you played these old school titles at the 4 to 3 ratio or if you want widescreen you can do that. Although it might look a little weird, some games it does look great. You have other options like full screen mode and screenshot size and a number of different things. The next thing we'll look at is rendering. There are some things you want to change here. The internal resolution. We have the native PS2 output which often is 640p. Not great. You can change this based on how high the resolution is of what you're watching it on. I would say for myself, I've got a 1080p monitor, we're going to go for this three times native, and we'll see a substantial difference. Other things we can change here are the anisotropic filtering, crank that up to 16 times. The next thing we're going to change is the adapter. We need to change this to your GPU from your CPU in most cases, because we want the emulator running from your GPU. The next thing we'll take a look at is memory cards. The PlayStation 2 had two memory card ports. This emulator has two memory card ports as well. Although you can create multiple memory cards, only two can be active at one time, just like the PlayStation 2. To create a memory card, you simply click create, you name the memory card, you choose the size of it, and click OK. You can switch out the memory cards by right clicking on the memory card, use for port 1 for example. Right click on memory card, use for port 2. You can close out of those settings and we're ready to check out our game. Let's double click on it. We can choose full screen if we didn't have it selected by the default. And we're ready to go with full controller compatibility just like a PlayStation 2. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the comments. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to drop it a like. And if you're new to the channel and dig the content, make sure to subscribe. I'll be covering some more emulators in the future. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.